Hi, A team. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Uh, it's uh, Thursday, July 28th. We are recording this presentation. And in a second here, I'm going to share my screen. Just wanted everybody to see everybody, everybody's faces. Um, and we'll go to the share screen view. And I will share this Canva. And I will click share. And I will launch full screen. All right. I think that everyone should be able to ooh, see everything. So we'll go from uh, we'll go from here. So hi, I'm Matt Pabroth, and I'm the project manager here uh, for this project. And I'm going to walk us through the first four or five slides, and then I will hand it over to someone else. And we'll all cycle through and talk about different aspects of our experience with this project which um, well, I'll talk about here in a second. So yeah, here is the overview. We'll first talk about project uh, scope. Then we'll talk about strategy and process. Then we'll talk specifically about the deliverables. And then finally, we'll talk about next steps and where we and Morgan Oliver School go from here. So here we have our project team and we're gonna take a minute and let everyone introduce themselves. I'll go last. And so we'll let Sophia go next and work our way from left to right. Excellent. Thank you. I'm Sophia Dofer. Um, I'm one of the content designers for this project. Um, and uh, I am a, a learning and development specialist uh, with a company called Millican based in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, I am uh, doing this project as part of the uh, master's um, in uh, instructional design and development uh, program. And I'm very excited to be working with this team who I've had the opportunity and privilege to work with um, a few times before. And uh, it's been wonderful working with them again, as well as the Morgan Oliver School. I'll pass it over to Emma. Hi, I'm Emma Jackson. I'm one of the developers for this project. And um, by day, I am a K-5 administrator at a private school in Apex, North Carolina, which is near Raleigh. Um, I Before that, I taught elementary school for seven years. And so now I'm moving into an administrative role and working on this project. Um, I, I was very excited to get to work with another small school and develop some of their school content and school policies as we are um, helping out with the Morgan Oliver School and their accreditation. So I'm going to pass it on to Caroline. Hi, I'm Caroline Nichols. Um, I, by day, work at an um, educational technology firm. Um, I'm an e-learning developer, and we do early childhood education content as professional development for early childhood educators. I was excited to work on this project because it's actually in our wheelhouse of content. So it was great to meet a school that's doing something as innovative as Morgan Oliver School. And I'll hand it over to Kent. Hi, I'm Kent Vanderslice, and I currently work at as an associate professor at Life University in the Chiropractic Science Department. And uh, I am taking this course as part of a, my MED through UGA. And I'm excited and privileged once again to be able to work with this fine team of uh, individuals to um, develop a um, parent um, handbook that um, relates or that is relatable to me because my child, my youngest child is 11 and she goes to a private institution that is young in their development. So this process was close to my heart. Great. Thanks. Matt. Yep. Thanks, everyone. I am uh, Matt Paproth, uh, and I was the project manager for this project. Um, I've, yeah, have worked with everyone here before and uh, was so excited to work with them again. Uh, by, are we doing by day and by night? Um, by day, I am an associate professor of English at uh, Georgia Gwinnett College, which is on its way over toward UGA. Um, and I, so I'm an English professor uh, taking these classes by night and chasing around my, my six-year-old who uh, actually is uh, by way of transition, uh, how we discovered the Morgan Oliver School as a client. So he, uh, the school started at, let's see if this relates to what's on the next slide. Okay, the client, yes. So the school uh, came into being as a result of COVID. And so right at the beginning of the pandemic, um, Sanidia Oliver, the, the founder, started the school in August of 2020, um, seeing a need for this type of, you know, um, school, private school founded on um, 
anti-racist education principles and, you know, for a diverse set of students um, who can, you know, sort of pay at, at various rates um, and go to school um, and learn about marginalized voices and have these kind of amazing experiences that we typically associate with, you know, rich white kids who can, whose parents can pay $30,000 a year to send them there. So um, this amazing opportunity to, to be here uh, at this school from the very, very first day, quite literally um, fell into, you know, we, my, my wife and I, and our son sort of fell into this um, during COVID and we have, um, loved our our years with uh, Sinidia and at Morgan Oliver. And since I started the program, I've thought the UGA program here, I've, I've thought, you know, how can I, uh, what wouldn't be a good time to work uh, with and, and help out the school? And so this seemed like the perfect fit for it here over the summer as they're going through some accreditation stuff and need a lot of, you know, online digital content. I was like, you know, we're, we're the people for for this job. Um, so that is the client, um, the project here, um, the specific one, we were creating a sort of like pair of handbooks, uh, one for their early care operation, and then sort of a template that we would leave them that they could use for um, their uh, elementary school and then their middle school as they kind of expand. The idea was that they could just use that document in whatever ways they wished. Um, and modify it to their to their needs. There, we were not exactly sure the grade breakdown um, this this year, and it would change in following years. So those are the those are the the deliverables there. Um, when we look at the handbook that we were making, uh, some sort of bullet points there. You know, it's a it's a parent handbook, right? It's it's a document meant to be used and referenced by parents of children attending MOS throughout the year. Uh, to you know, have these kind of like set in pretty much stone policies that that govern the ethos and the day to day operations of the school. Um, as I said earlier, it was necessary for the accreditation process, and it yeah I think she has to turn it in in the next week or two in order for the early care. The early care is the one that needs to be accredited this year. Um, and so we set the the deadline for July 28th, which is the day that we're recording this, and we are happy to say that we we delivered what we needed to deliver to them by by that deadline. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it included an editable template, and uh, I'm sure my colleagues will talk about this here. But we had some brand identity guidelines that were, you know, one of the governing uh, pieces of uh, content that were given to us that we we sort of applied to their policies and content. So I'm going to turn it over to somebody else here as I hit next. As you all need me to, just say next and I'll bump you to the next slide. Okay. Okay. I will take over here. So I um, wanted to mention uh, the biggest project constraint that we had, um, which was time. Uh, this was, uh, you know, sort of a, a large project or, you know, undertaking to to take on um, with a fairly short timeline. Oh, we'll go back one more. I'll go back. Yes, sorry. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So ba basically, three weeks from from start to finish, essentially to complete this handbook um, and the template. So uh, we we knew that going in that we uh, did have this short timeline and we needed to make the best use of our time. Um, part of that was um, making sure that people, uh, all the different members of the team, were working on sort of the different pieces, um, you know, at, at kind of um, all at, at the same time, essentially kind of dividing up the work. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, but communication was uh, a, a huge part of what kept us going. Um, so that was something, uh, and we, again, we have worked together in the past. So uh, certainly that was, um, that, that was a benefit to us um, because we did have, you know, sort of a, an existing understanding of how to communicate with each other. Um, so we did maintain very constant communication within the group and then also with the client. 
um, having Matt with the, the personal connection to Synidia, um, to, to the school in general was, was very helpful um, because he was able to, um, to kind of help us you know, maintain that constant communication. Uh, the other thing we were able to do was leverage existing work. So um, there, there were some existing outlines for the parent handbook. Um, as well as some, um, you know, obviously existing policies and procedures. Um, so essentially, we were taking all of this and putting it together into one, one, you know, larger document. So we wanted to make sure to not reinvent the wheel when where we didn't, uh, where it was not necessary to do so. So making sure to leverage what was already there. And so communication, I mentioned, was obviously a, a you know a, a big part of any project. Um, so this is just kind of uh, showing how we communicated, uh, you know, for the most part, email was, was a, a big means of communication. Uh, we, about 59% of our communication was done through email. Uh, we started that pretty early on in the project and we, you know, just constantly sort of replied all um, on various topics. Um, text is also very big. We have, again, an existing group text uh, that we use and we, we texted all throughout the day. Um, and then we did some, you know, standard uh, scheduled Zoom calls um, each week as well. Um, although I would say def definitely text and email were our main means of communication. We'll go to the next slide. And so early on, we did have this initial timeline. We had a Gantt chart of, of kind of how we expected the project to, to progress, um, you know, with week one being you know, researching information gathering, um, getting into the writing and editing cycles. Um, and then the design phase, we really thought of more of, you know, as, you know, making sure that the look of it was what we wanted. It was in, in line with the school's brand identity. Um, and then getting it to the stakeholder was next, um, which we knew we, we wanted to do fairly early on and give them plenty of time to offer feedback so that we can make changes. Um, and then the last part of it being the template creation. Um, so we did update, if we'll go to the next slide, later um, did make a little bit more detailed Gantt chart um, with uh, that included all of the the project documents that we needed to complete as well um, again you know we had to have people working on on different parts of this that you know not only the actual handbook itself um, the communication piece and then also all the project documents so we included all of those in here um, including uh, the sort of four main phases of the project um, which Emma is going to detail in just a second but we wanted to make sure that um, not only the phases of the actual project were, were in there, but also the, the project document. So I'm going to, with that, hand it over to Emma to talk through some of the phases. Oops. All right, thank you. So our first phase was really just the initial starting of our project and uh, kind of touching base with our client and making sure that we were all on the same page about what was going to be happening with this project and the ways that we can make sure that we are all kind of giving them what they need. So the first thing we did was constructed a Canva account that was specifically associated with this project. Um, we did that because it was important that we were able to all access this Canva document and go in and edit and collaborate, but also we wanted to make sure that our client was able to access it and that we were able to access our their art and their fonts and different things that they needed in order to be you know associated with their school and their brand. Um, so once we constructed our Canva account, we went through and identified the sections. Um, like somebody said earlier, there was some previous um, work done on this handbook. Somebody, I believe a parent from the Morgan Oliver School had gone through and created all of the different sections and kind of an outline of what needed to be included. So we were able to kind of go through our table of contents from there. Then we got all, of, we met with the client for the first time and got all of our art and graphics and made sure that we all had as much information as possible. And then we did an initial review of the art and the different content that was needed in order to go ahead and start actually implementing the content and putting different, putting the different information into the correct spots. So go ahead and hit next. Perfect, then we moved on to phase two. We scheduled our client meeting um, to show them kind of our first draft of what we were working on and discuss what was gonna be included and the format and making sure that they had access to Canva and that we had all of these different things that we needed in order to go ahead and move forward. So then we went ahead and wrote our first draft and uh, included all kinds of content from their website, uh, different information that they had provided for us and 
um, included a lot of images. And we, like I said, we did this in a, a Canva document so that we were able to collaborate and also um, put our different designs in it and make sure that it was looking good for them as well. And then we gathered all of those additional resources that we need. We touched base with our with our client to make sure that um, we had access to all of their information as well. Then we moved into phase three, which was the client went through the Morgan Oliver School and they reviewed some of the things that we did and sent us things that they wanted us to edit, things that they wanted us to trim down things like that. Um, we then sent another draft over. Um, so we made sure that we were in very close communication with our client. Um, we met with them to review our first draft and finalize our first draft. Again, just checking in to make sure that everything that we had put in there was accurate with their policies. And, you know, with a background in administration, I know that it's important that parents are very aware of the different rules and procedures you have. So we wanted to make sure that that was all accurately reflected. And then we finalized our, our draft that we were working through. Then we moved into phase four, which was we needed to make some revisions that the client had requested to our handbook. Um, and we had to go ahead and develop the final copy. So this included all kinds of you know revisions to policies, um, any kind of design revisions that we needed to make. We went through a few different drafts, making sure we had you know, images and page numbers and that everything was easily accessible. And then we need went through and shared that final product and all of our files with our client. Um, again, we this was shared through Canva so that they could continue to go in and edit it, but also that they could um, download it as a PDF if they needed to do that. Um, and then we went through and developed a template that they could use for future handbooks. So like Matt was saying earlier, we want them to be able to have a basic outline so that they can edit it for early childhood, elementary, middle, high school, however it is they are going to choose to expand in the future. Um, they're always going to need a parent handbook and policies change as children kind of get older and go into different grades. So we wanted to make sure that they had a template that was ready to go. So that was our last kind of step there in development before we sent all of that off to our client. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to somebody yep. else now. I will take this part. Um, what we have here is our hour spent graph. and just shows uh, throughout the project that uh, the different components that we use, the scope draft, uh, document, the project plan, work strategy, and final, and then the handbook, all the different hours that we spent, the majority of them, as you can see, the 20 at the top of the yellow line would help us uh, kind of determine where we're spending most of our times. Next slide. Okay. This right here is our cost per hour, and it's just uh, depicting all the time that we spent and the, the, the amount of the $50 per hour is what we estimated as being a um, cost component. This is pro bono, so the charges were not uh, given to the clients, but this was what we would have done and how we would have rated our projects and the different components of the projects and the time that we spent and the hour and the money that we would uh, be billing that for. Next slide. This is a diagram of our involvement. Um, the majority, the larger circle indicates our project manager, Matt Popra. And then um, in this front and center is the MOS ECC parent handbook that we were all developing and um, working on. You'll notice at the bottom part of the screen, you'll see the stakeholders had involvement in <clears throat> the uh, parent teacher handbook, parent uh, handbook, as well as reviewing all the different components as we were working together in succession with one another. Each one of the, um, the light yellow or the uh, tan pictures depicts the other team members and their involvement and engagement in each one of the components overlapping. Next slide. And on to Carolyn. Okay, so what we ended up delivering was the parent handbook, as talked about previously, and the editable template that was later or developed after we developed the first one so that they could edit and make changes for other schools and also this one. Go ahead. We developed um, three subsections within this parent handbook, which ended up being about 45 pages long. Um, a welcome, which included a letter from the um, uh, pre uh, principal of the school, um, and about us, which uh, could be broken up by school, about teachers, 
that uh, parents will encounter and their children will encounter their approach to learning and how parents can get involved. And then of course, the most important section, which is all the policies, meals, schedules, uh, sick policies, and um, finally a signed acknowledgement by the parents, which is um, both important for accreditation and also for a contract with parents for um, older education facilities as well. Go ahead. Um, so our next steps afterwards, I think we wanted to talk about this as a group perhaps, but I think the next steps after we finish this project is to of course file uh, transfer the files to the client, train them on Canva on how to use and um, interact with the content that's on there. It's not the greatest word processing program. It looks pretty, but um, there is some technical knowledge that we can give to them on how to um, edit text and then how to use that template also to uh, reformat pictures, put new pictures in, load new pictures, all of the, that, all that good stuff to use the template. Next slide. And our recommendations, um, we, we had asked them to put a PDF on the website so that they can download it. Um, the faculty handbook, uh, they have an existing handbook, but perhaps they could use this template to put that content into this format so that it all adheres to their brand, which um, was something I didn't talk about, but we did receive extensive design branding materials, which made this project a little easy. And then put the templates in their Canvas classroom so the faculty can work together and edit at the, at the same time simultaneously. Next slide. And thank you. All right, I'm gonna- We have a minute and a half left. Cool, yeah. Uh, so um, I'm going back to Zoom because you are seeing my whole screen. Uh, let's stop sharing my screen then. Okay, hi. We're all back. Um, what should we, we have a couple of minutes here uh, at the end of the presentation. What should we, what should we reflect on here? On the on the process, do people have sort of like major takeaways from the experience? Yes, Caroline. You know, I didn't say it before, but we have all worked together in a different class. I don't know that this could have happened in the time frame that we were given without everybody working um, together as a team mm -hmm. and being as uh, responsive as we are throughout the day. It did, probably wouldn't have gotten done. So mm -hmm. I'm glad for the school that we were able to deliver on time. Yeah. And on budget, which was none and didn't sacrifice too much quality. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I think there was definitely a trust level uh, that I felt here that I haven't felt before. I mean, I mean, sorry, by the end of last project, I trusted you all pretty well, but certainly coming into it, I trusted everybody. And so, you know, like there's work that we've turned in and completed and that I've not even looked Definitely. at. Uh, that I've not that I've not even uh, looked at, and I'm sure that goes the same for everybody. And there's just you know a trust level of, you know, I know such and such. You know, Kent is gonna fill in these charts, and I know Emma is gonna, you know, get this document done over here. And I know Caroline overnight is gonna make something a uh, document look very pretty. Um, at, like I know that all these things are, are gonna happen. Um, oh, and now I said everybody but Sophia. I know that I Sophia know. is going to deliver on uh, uh, on these in these, presenta <laughs> these presentations. Well, I was only going to do the two of them, and I got distracted when. That, um, and we know that happened. Matt is going to be able to communicate effectively with our client yeah. and with our professor, and be able to keep us on task and organize and make sure that it all gets done in a timely manner. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks. I think also the subject matter and experts that we have on this group of mm. team members, everyone has their own um, aspect that they're very, very good at. And it fits mm. in with this type of model, as well as done with the others. But this team seemed to be um, very dynamic in its synergistic quality for each individual having their input because that's what they're most comfortable and very good at. Absolutely. Totally agree, everybody. All right. I think we're done here. I tell students never to end a presentation by saying, okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> so anyway, thanks everybody. Thanks Dr. Branch for uh, so the much. class and opening up such a you know space where we could do a big 
project like this and have so much freedom. I thought it really helped and was great.